We are going to be looking at measures of center in this video. Measures of center are ways that we estimate or approximate the middle of a set of data. Measures of center are descriptive statistics because they are describing the middle or center of data that we have actually collected. We're not going to be inferring anything about the population, just calculating or describing the center of a sample. We're going to be looking at four different measurements. The first one is the mean. When we talk about the mean, we usually have a good sense of what the mean is. It's the sum of all the data values divided by the number of data values. Outside of statistics, we would call this the average. Inside statistics, we are more precise with our language. So since average can mean a number of different things, we'll always refer to this as the mean. Next, we'll take a look at the formula that describes this process. So we know that the, by definition, it's the sum of all the data values divided by the number of data values. We have two formulas that are given to us. They essentially are the same, but one is for a sample, and one is if we have the entire population. In general, and I have this at the bottom of the slide, we use the Greek letters if we're talking about a population. Remember, population, those numbers would be called parameters. And we use the English letters if we're talking about a sample. And again, remember, with a sample, we would call those numbers a statistic. So for both formulas, the first formula, the English letter, is x with this bar on top, and it is pronounced x bar, and that is the mean of a sample. And then over here we have the Greek letter. This looks almost like an M, and it is called mu, and that is the mean of a population. So we calculate these the exact same way. On the top of our fraction bar we have this Greek letter sigma, and sigma is the shorthand notation that just means to add up everything. So we're going to add together all of the data pieces, the data pieces represented by x. So both formulas, the sigma, add up all of the data. Over here, add up all of the data values. And then we're going to divide by the number of data values. So for the sample, we use a lowercase n for the number of data values. And for the population, we use the uppercase n for the number of data values. Let's take a look at an example. And so I used the census data, and this data is from 2009, and found the active physicians and active nurses per 100,000 residents of population. And in this chart, I have the data for the states that were the original 13 colonies of the United States. So let's take a look specifically at the nurses, because more of us are nurses than doctors. And so, when I look through this, I'd like to know what is the mean, that idea of, on average, how many nurses are there per 100,000 residents for each state. So what I want to do is follow my formula. I want to add up all of the data values, divide by how many there are. Well, it's pretty easy here. I told you it's the original 13. If I count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 pieces of data. So I add up all the data values, divide by 13. Order of operations means I have to do this entire addition and get a number for that, which I got 12,387, and then divide by 13, and I get this long decimal. So this brings up the idea of rounding. Typically, when I'm doing some math, I can get numbers with decimals that may not be nice short decimals. So what we do in statistics is we usually keep one more digit than our original data. So in our original data, all of these were whole numbers, which means I would round this off to the tenth. And so in conclusion, the mean is 952.8 nurses per 100,000 residents. You'll notice as I write my answer, my answer has to have a label. So this number, the meaning of that number, is nurses per 100,000 residents. 
And here's the rounding rule that I stated. Keep one more decimal than the original data. So that's mean. Our next measure of center is called the median. For the median, we're finding the middle number of an ordered set of data. Really important that your data is put in order first. So it does not matter if you start with the smallest and work your way up to the largest or vice versa. Start with the largest and work your way down to the smallest. But you have to put them in order and then you find the middle. Now, if you have an even number of data, you're going to have two numbers that are in the middle. So when that happens, the median is found by taking the mean of those two numbers. So if we put all those concepts together, when there's two numbers in the middle, you add them together and divide by two. The symbol that we use is the x with this little squiggle on top called x tilde. So let's take a look at an example. Exact same data as the previous slide. So what I want to do is I want to put all of these nurses in order. Now me personally, I usually start at the smallest. So I'd start with 665. My next data value is 764, et cetera, et cetera, and I took time to type them in. So here we have all of our data, all 13 pieces in order. Now we need to find the middle piece of data. So I think the easiest way to do this is just to start crossing data out, and I'm going to go through that process. So if I cross one out on the left, I also cross one out on the right. And then I do the second one, left and right third one, and I'm just working my way into the middle, finding which number is the exact middle of this set of data. And so I get to 940 as the middle piece of data when the data is in order, and we call that the median. And so I would say x tilde is 940 nurses per 100,000 residents. And you'll notice that, again, I have the label, and the label is exactly the label that we had on the mean. And all of our measures of centers have the exact same label as our data. Our data is nurses per 100,000 residents. And so their labels on the measure of center will match that. Our next measure of center is the mode. And the mode is the value that occurs most often. Data sets vary, so this plays out differently. And I have these on the slide. When each number appears once, we say there is no mode. If we have two values that both occur with the greatest frequency, so we have four of the num one number and four of another number, and everything else is there less often, we would call it bimodal data, and we'd give both numbers as the mode. And then data sets can be multimodal. So you can have one number that's most common, two numbers that are most common, three numbers, et cetera, et cetera. So let's take a look at our data set. We are dealing with the nurses, so go down through here, looking for any repeats, any number that's more common than the rest, and there are no repeats whatsoever. So we're in this first scenario. Each number appears once in our data set, and our conclusion there is that our data set has no mode. So mode, pretty easy, no formula for mode, no symbol to learn for mode. And our final measure of center is the mid-range. So the way that we find the mid-range is to take the maximum piece of data and add it to the minimum piece of data. So that's that idea of range, the whole range from the smallest to the largest. And then we want the middle of that range, so we divide it by 2. And so this will give us the value that is midway between the maximum and minimum. The mid-range does not necessarily have the same value as the median. The median is also that idea of the middle, but the median, we're crossing out actual numbers. We're not doing the math for median. We're just crossing out numbers to find the middle number. Here, we're actually finding the midpoint of the range, which is called the mid-range. So again, let's give it a try with our data set. I want to look for the maximum value. So I find it right here, this 1260. And I also need the minimum value, and we mentioned that before, is this 665. So in order to find the mid-range, I take these two and add them together and divide by 2. 
Again, like the mean, I have to do this addition on top first and then the division and I get this number and it has a 0.5 and that's okay. That is one decimal beyond our data and so we will keep that and we would give our answer as 962.5 nurses per 100,000 residents as the mid-range. And again, no symbol for mid-range. So we just have to learn notation for mean and median. Next, we're going to take a look at this entire process with technology. Technology is super important for descriptive statistics because we have sets of data and doing all this math by hand is really time consuming. Even working with just a small set like we had of uh, 13 data values, very time consuming. So we're going to take a look at working with this in Minitab. So here you see my Minitab screen. And the data is down here, so I have the state, and that is actually all of the states. I have the doctors and the nurses, and it tells me up here at the beginning, this is the active physicians and nurses per 100,000 resident population by state from data from 2009. Then we have same information for the original 13 colonies. And finally, we have just the nurse information for those states that border Pennsylvania. So we're going to take a look at the same exact data that we did by hand, which was the original 13, the nurses. In order to do this, I go up to the top here and I go to stats, and I want basic stats, and I want it to display descriptive statistics, because we are calculating descriptive stats. So you'll see this comes up with a list, and I have to look what I want. So I want nurses one is the column header. So I go to nurses one and just double click and that will fill as my variable. And then down here there is the statistics button and it's all kinds of descriptive statistics and I can pick what I want. So I would like the mean. It'd be nice to know the minimum and maximum. Those are already picked. I don't need these. So let's see, what else do we want? I'd like the median. We talked about that. I would like the mode. We talked about that. I don't see mid-range on here, but mid-range will be very easy to calculate because I'm having it list both the minimum and the maximum. So I'll just add those two numbers and divide by two to get mid-range. So after that, I click OK and click OK again. And you'll see that data that I asked for right up here. So the mean, exactly what we found, 952.8 nurses per 100,000. Minimum value was same as we identified. Median is here, same as we identified. Maximum value we found. The mode, we see this little asterisk. And then we see over here, N for mode. N, we remember, is the number of data values. And so it's a zero because there was no mode. Now, let's look at a bigger set of data. So if we look in our worksheet down here, we have, and I'm scrolling down here, all 50 states plus Washington, D.C., so 51 pieces of data. I don't want to calculate mean, median, mode by hand for 51 pieces of data, but it's very easy to do with mini tabs. So I go up to Stat. Basic stats, I want it to do descriptive statistics. My column name is now nurses, so I double click on nurses. The statistics I want are the exact same ones we just did. So I can click OK on that, click OK one more time, and look, it did it for me. So on average, the mean, 900.8 nurses per 100,000 residents. Minimum value, 585. Median, 901, maximum value. And then under mode, I actually have three modes. So I have multimodal data. And it tells me the N for the mode. Each of these pieces of data was used twice. There were two states that had them, which was more common than just one state having it. So that's how I use technology to do the basic stats. 
If you don't have the data already in Minitab, you can just go in and type it. So you can type in this worksheet, give your columns different headings, and then you can pick them and you can calculate the descriptive stats really quickly, which would be your goal as you work on homework. So we're going back to looking at a couple more details with measures of center. We're going to look at mean of summarized data. So this is data that you worked with extensively in homework, where we had the age of best actress when the Oscar was won, and the frequency. And we see that this is already in a frequency table. It would be perfect to put in a histogram. But the challenge is that we don't know the actual data. So yes, there were 27 actresses in this range, but I don't know the 27 different ages. I don't know how many were 20, how many were 29, how many were 22, etc., etc. So we still have a way to calculate the mean. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the mid-range or midpoint of this category as an estimate for that category. So the very first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of these categories and calculate the midpoint. So if you remember how to do that, to calculate the midpoint, I take the lowest data value 20, I add to it the highest data value 29, divide those by 2, so on my calculator I get 49 divided by 2, and that gives me a midpoint of 24.5. So once I know that midpoint, then I can use my class size and I can see easily that my classes are going up by tens to calculate all the midpoints without doing so much math. So there they are, midpoints. The midpoints are referred to as X because we're going to use them as our actual pieces of data because we don't know the original pieces of data. So this is a good estimate of the data in this category. Now, the frequency tells us how many pieces of data were in that category. So this category had 27 pieces of data, so that means to calculate the mean, I'm going to use this 24.5 27 times. Now we know in our heads to calculate the mean, we would add up all the data, so I'd add 24.5 27 times. Well, when I have that repeated addition, I can use multiplication to simulate that. So I'm going to take 27 and multiply it by 24.5, and that would give me the same answer as if I added 24.5 27 different times. So the way that we're doing that is really taking the frequency times the midpoint. So the frequency column, and I'm using F for that, multiplied by the midpoint column using X for that and I get the value for each of those. So at this point we're going to take a look at the formula and the formula uses the sum, remember sigma means the sum, of all those fx's divided by the sum of the frequencies. So the sum of the frequencies, that would just be the total number of data values. And the sum of all the fx's would be on the top here is really our estimate of the sum of the data. So I'm going to add a row to the bottom of my chart and do those two sums. So I add up all the frequencies, I get 82 pieces of data, and I add up all of the frequency times x, so like the total value of the data is approximately 2,939. I plug those numbers into the formula that we have, and that gives me an estimate for the mean. So I'm going to round that off. Our data was whole numbers, and so we'll give the age as 35.8. Now, I had the opportunity to go and look at the actual data, and if I used the actual data, I would have gotten a mean of 35.9. So a really good estimate. Sometimes the estimates vary a little bit more than this one, but this process gives us a way to still summarize, give that one number summary of the middle of the data, 
even if the only data we have is already summarized in a frequency distribution table. Next, we want to look at which one should we use. So we have four measures of center, mean, median, mode, and mid-range. And some are better than others for different scenarios. That's why we have different ones. So of all four, the mean and the median are most commonly used. And that's why those have symbols. They have a shorthand because they're used more often. Of those two, the mean is actually the most common. So if you're really stuck, try the mean. Chances are you might be the, picking the right one. The mean uses all of the values because you add up all of the numbers. And so it is sensitive to outliers, numbers that are far away from the other values. You may have experienced this with your grades. If you're taking a course and you're doing well, so all your grades are in the 80s and 90s, and then for whatever reason you need to miss an assignment, and so you take a zero. That zero is an outlier. It's far away from all of your other scores, and it brings your grade down significantly. And you work like crazy, and you get grades in the high 90s, and they never bring your grade up as much as that one zero brought it down. So when there are outliers, we typically use the median. The median is not as sensitive to outliers, because with the median, we would cross out the zero and your highest score. Keep doing that with the numbers that are left, crossing out the lowest and the highest, and we would end up in the 80s or 90s, because that's where most of your grades were. So things like income, typically the median is reported, because there would be a few people who are not working, so they have income of zero, and there would be a few people who make millions, and so they would be crossed out with those zeros, and then we would get a good sense of what the regular person makes. The same is done with houses. So when if you're looking to buy a house, typically the median, because there are a few properties that are just worth millions of dollars, and they would throw off just the idea of what does a regular home cost. We do study the others, though, because mode is typically used with qualitative data, and you give the category that is most common. Mid-range is the least used, and the reason why we looked at mid-range at all is to reinforce the idea that mid-range is the same idea as midpoint. We use midpoint when we calculate the mean for summarized data. We use midpoint when we label a histogram, and so we get to practice that calculation again. Lastly, we're going to go through and review, give you a little mnemonic device to help you remember the measures of center. And you always get to use your notes, so if you have them written down, you can look them up. But sometimes it's nice to have them in your head. The first one is the mean. It is mean and nasty because it makes you do a lot of math. You have to add up all the numbers and divide by how many there are. Second one is the median. When we talk about the median outside of statistics, the median is that strip down the center of the road. And the median is the number in the center of the data. So here our cars and trucks are all lined up going the right direction, median right down the center. And so when we line our data up, put it all in order, the median, that middle number. The mode is the most common. When we look at the word mode, it starts with MO. When we look at the word most, it starts with MO. And so we can put those two together. They start the same. And the mid-range is the same formula as the midpoint, and so when we look at mid-range, it starts with mid. When we look at midpoint, it starts with mid, and so we can put those two together. And that can help us to remember which is which when we're talking about measures of center.